Arvidsson playing tonight? And is there a Kings goalie controversy? That and more on this edition of Locked On LA Kings. You are Locked On Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked On LA Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We'd love for you to leave us a positive comment on Apple Podcasts if you're a fan of the show. And we are on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. I'm Eddie Garcia, your host of Locked On LA Kings. I've worked at sports media for the past 30 years, 20 plus years at the Fox Sports Radio Network. Also co-host of the Puck Podcast. It's a weekly NHL review show that's been putting out content for the last 17 years and a passionate LA Kings fan for over 30 years. Today's episode is brought to you by Sleeper. Download the Sleeper app and use the promo code Locked on NHL to get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. The LA Kings continue that stretch run towards the Stanley Cup playoffs, still looking to play their best hockey at the right time, but they do need a healthy Victor Arvidsson in the lineup to make that happen. And it looks like that's close to being a possibility, maybe as soon as tonight. More on that coming up, but the Kings are back in action tonight as they play game number one of their three-game homestand against the Chicago Blackhawks. The two teams met last week in Chicago with the Kings posting a convincing 5-0 shutout victory. Kings come into tonight's game with a record of 34-22-11, third place in the Pacific Division, seventh best record in the Western Conference, and the 12th most points in the NHL with 79. Kings are 14-11-7 at home. And they're coming off a 5-1 loss in Dallas in their last game against the Stars. Chicago, 19-44-5. They are 6th place in the Central Division, 15th place in the Western Conference, only San Jose is worse, and 31st out of 32 teams in the NHL with only 43 points. Again, only San Jose has fewer. Chicago, 5-26-1 on the road this season, coming off a 5-2 home win against the Sharks on Sunday. As for the numbers, comparing the team's stats, Kings are 19th in the NHL as far as goals scored per game. They're averaging 3.01 goals per game. Blackhawks are dead last in the NHL, 32nd. They are averaging 2.19 goals per game. LA is still third in the NHL in goals allowed per game, 2.58. Chicago, 29th in the NHL. They're allowing 3.54 goals per game the Kings have actually moved up somehow in power play percentage they're now 14th in the NHL I guess other teams have fallen below them which is hard to imagine Uh, the Kings though operating at 21.7 percent on the power play seems worse Uh, the Blackhawks are 28th in the league in the power play 15.9 percent LA still the number one team in the NHL on the penalty kill 86.4 percent Chicago 22nd in the NHL on the PK at 77.7 Individually, the Kings have three players with 50 or more points and four players with 20 or more goals on the roster right now. L.A. is led in points by Kevin Fiala, who has 58, 22 goals and 36 assists. Andre Kopitar and Adrian Kempe each have 55 points. Trevor Moore leads the team in goals with 25. Fiala has 22 goals, Kempe 21, Kopitar 20, and Quinton Byfield looking to join the 20-goal club. He's one away with 19 as for chicago they are led in points and goals by rookie and number one overall draft pick this year connor bedard he's got 53 points 21 goals and 32 assists bedard is the only chicago player that has 50 or more points and the only blackhawks player with 20 or more goals on the roster he did not have a single point in the last time and last meeting that the kings uh, had against the blackhawks a couple days ago As for the two netminders, this is something we're going to talk a little bit more about with the Kings in a bit. uh, L.A. expected to start Cam Talbot. He is 20-15-6, a 2.43 goals against average, which is sixth best in the NHL, and a 9-17 save percentage tied for third best in the NHL. Some people might be surprised by those rankings. Uh, Talbot has three shutouts on the year. His last game was a 5-0 shutout of the Blackhawks in Chicago last Friday. Uh, Talbot 2-2-1 two, two, in his last five starts. Blackhawks are 
going to go reportedly with their number one goalie, Peter Morazic. Uh, he's a veteran guy uh, on the season. His numbers 15, 25, and four is the record. 3.03 goals against average, a 907 save percentage. Actually, it's not that bad for, yeah, for a really bad team. Um, he has won his last start. That was Sunday against the Sharks. He allowed two goals on 27 shots. This is the second of three meetings between the Blackhawks and the Kings. They will meet in the final game of the regular season in L.A. on April the 18th. Now, usually we put up a projection or talk about a projection of uh, what we think the starting lineup is going to be. But it seems like this is really up in the air because of the Victor Arvidsson situation. Is Arvidsson going to play tonight? Maybe. We'll talk more about that in a minute. If he does play, where is he going to play? In practice the other day, he was on the fourth line, which was a big surprise. Will the Kings go with a traditional 12 forward, six defenseman lineup? Or if Arvidsson doesn't play, will they go back to the 11-7 match uh, setup that they've had that's been successful? Not really sure. It's kind of uh, something we're going to have to wait and see again because of the status of Victor Arvidsson. I am still asked uh, on occasion in emails and messages if the Kings are going to make the playoffs. And I'm a bit surprised by this. Of course, they're never in until they actually clinch. I get that. And the Kings aren't exactly lighting the NHL on fire. They're certainly not, you know, stinking out loud like they were at some points this season as well. But the Kings are going to make the playoffs. I, I really think we can put that to rest if that is any kind of a question in anyone's mind. And what is my evidence towards this? Well, LA has 15 games left in the regular season, nine home and six road, with five of those games being against some of the worst teams in the NHL. Two more games against Chicago, two more games against Anaheim, and one more game against San Jose. Those are three of the worst teams in the NHL. You also have mixed in teams that aren't awful, but aren't going to make the playoffs. That would be Minnesota. Unlikely they're going to get in. The Kings play them two more times. Calgary, unlikely they're going to get in. They play the Kings two more times. And you've got Seattle once as well. Now, those teams, again, aren't awful. They're they're still fringe wild card teams. I don't think, though, any of those teams are going to make the playoffs. So you're talking 10 of the last 15 games for the Kings will most likely be against teams that are not going to qualify for the playoffs. Now, the Kings may not get two points in every one of those games, but they will cash in enough points to lock down a playoff spot. Of course, that's on paper, and they play the games on ice. That said, the Kings' combined record against those six teams I just mentioned on the season so far is 8-2. and two. So, bottom line, the Kings still need to go out and do what they're supposed to do but if they do, which they should, and I believe they will, they will get enough points to get into the playoffs. Is, was, will it be as the third team in the Pacific? Will it be as the second wild card? Obviously, that is still to be determined, but they're going to get in. As for their opponent tonight, Chicago, hopefully the Kings don't think, well, we just blew them out the other day uh, in their house. We just need to show up and, and we'll be fine. As I have said, um, you know, this team should be aware, and I think they are. There's enough veterans in that room to understand it doesn't matter who you're playing at this time of the year. Now is the time to be getting into playoff mode. Now is the time to be playing your game. You don't care who the opponent is. Of course, if it's somebody like an Edmonton or a Vancouver or somebody like that, it's going to be a bigger game. You're going to be more excited to, to play those games than you would be against a Chicago or a San Jose. But again, it's about you. It's not about them. The Kings need to be playing the right way now going into the playoffs not you don't flip a switch once you get there you start setting those tones now so if the kings do that regardless of the opponent the rest will take care of itself is there a goalie situation with the la kings and yes we do have a victor arvidsson update of sorts we'll talk about that next year on locked on la kings your team every day As we head down the stretch run of the NHL season, the Kings are looking to make a playoff push. But regardless of where the Kings are on the standings, I want to remind you that you can win big by playing Daily Fantasy Hockey on Sleeper, the official Daily Fantasy app of the Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one go-to choice for Daily Fantasy Sports, especially Daily Fantasy Hockey, because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in Daily Fantasy Hockey contests. All you have to do is pick whether... Players like Austin Matthews or Nathan McKinnon or Nikita Kucherov will record more or less 
based on sleepers projections for things like goals, assists or goalie saves plus minus and more in a given game. And it's not just the NHL. You can also play daily fantasy hockey with the NBA as well. If you like that, you can do both. To win 100 times bet on Sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me right, Kings fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with Sleeper. So start paying attention, nail your picks, and you could win big. Use the promo code LOCKEDONNHL, and you'll get up to $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code LOCKEDONNHL. See Sleeper's terms of use for details and locational availabilities. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now you can also find it on Amazon Fire TV. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find the Locked On Sports Today channel now on Amazon Fire TV, and they have a big Major League Baseball preview coming up soon. I think the Dodgers are playing tonight. I think I have that right. I think the Dodgers, well, not tonight. It's actually early this morning, like 3 p.m. Pacific time. They're over in in Korea uh, opening up the season, which is always a little weird. Anyway, uh, do we have a Victor Arvidsson update? The answer is yes, sort of. A uh, friend of the show, Russell Morgan from Hockey Royalty, He, we are lucky enough that he gets to go out to practice every day and gets to uh, hear and see what's going on with the Kings. I wish I could do that, but uh, I have a job and I have to sleep at times. Anyway, um, Russell Morgan reported that head coach Jim Hiller and uh, Victor Arvidsson, um, as far as Victor Arvidsson, that Jim Hiller said that he is a possibility for tonight. It sounds like he's a game time decision. Hiller said that he would talk to Arvidsson, get a sense for how he feels, and then go from there. My guess is he doesn't play tonight. Probably this weekend. I think it's going to be Saturday against Tampa Bay. There's certainly a chance he could play tomorrow. But like I said, sounds like a game time decision. Sounds like if if Victor Arvidsson does come to Jim Hiller before the game, and he says, I am definitely 100%, I am ready to go, I want to play tonight, then we could definitely see him in the lineup. Uh, but if he says, if he doesn't get that kind of indication, maybe he says, ah, you know what, let's wait. Let's wait a game or two. We shall see. It's obviously uh, an important decision. Um, I've said I would err on the side of caution because I think Victor Arvidsson is that important to the Kings, and I'm normally not that way. Uh, you know, I'm kind of old school. I think pitchers should stay in a game even if they're you know i mean nowadays in major league baseball some guys throwing a no hitter and they take him out after 70 pitches i think that's ridiculous uh in the nba they've got load management all over the place these i mean these guys are the greatest athletes in the world uh you get a whole off season off i don't think it's too much to ask you to play you know most of the games but yet they they, they rest for the playoffs and it doesn't i don't think there's any evidence that it works but anyway I get the idea that if the if the medical people clear Victor Arvidsson and he says he's ready to go, I get why you'd want to get him in there. But I, when you've got one player that's so important to a lineup and your postseason success, which I believe Victor Arvidsson is, take every precaution necessary, and uh, and we'll see what happens. So stay tuned. It could be Victor Arvidsson tonight. I'm I'm thinking they're leaning towards no, but it sounds like he's a game time decision, so it'll make things interesting for uh, the Kings coming up tonight. So um, we had a couple emails on our Friday feedback show, and I do see some of this. Um, and there's talk about the Kings goalie and who it should be for the playoffs. And a couple of the guys we had emails from this weekend thought they were leaning towards David Riddick. And that surprised me. But I figured, you know what? Let me look into it. Let's see what the numbers say and find out is it as is it closer than maybe it appears? Is is David Riddick statistically uh, the better option to Cam Talbot, or are they pretty much kind of the same guy? So uh, on the season, mentioned it earlier, uh, Cam Talbot's record is 20, 16, and 6. Of course, David Riddick doesn't have the same number of starts because Phoenix Copley, the start of the year, was the number two. Then he gets hurt. Riddick comes in. On the season, Riddick is 10, 5, and 3. So if you extrapolate those numbers if you double them up it gets close to the number of games that cam talbot has played and the numbers would be very very similar to each other if you doubled riddich's numbers he'd be 20 10 and 3 
Riddich, or excuse me, Cam Talbot is 20, 16, and 6. Um, let me correct that. Actually, Rid- Talbot's 20, 16, and 6. Riddich, if he doubled his numbers, he'd be 20, 10, and 6. So very similar numbers. Winning percentage would slightly favor David Riddick in that scenario. Talbot on the season, 2.43 goals against average. Riddick actually better, again, smaller sample size at 229. So advantage Riddick in that situation. Talbot has a 917 save percentage. Riddick is at 916. So obviously that's pretty much a wash. Uh, however, since the coaching change, Talbot is 6 4 and 1 in 11 starts. Riddich is 5 and 4 in 9 starts, so advantage Talbot. Since the coaching change, Talbot's goals against average is less than 2 at 1.95 compared to Riddich. Since the coaching change, he's at 2.52. Uh, Talbot's save percentage, 937 since the coaching change, which is very good. Riddich, okay, at 905, but again, those numbers clearly favoring Cam Talbot since the coaching change. Uh, worst game for Talbot since they made the change. Well, he's given up three goals on a couple of different occasions. For Riddich, it was that Buffalo game, and maybe those are skewing the numbers, but he allowed five goals in two periods, got pulled in that 7 nothing ugly loss up in Buffalo. So on the season, it's relatively even. Uh, slight advantage maybe to David Riddich. If, again, if you extrapolate those numbers out to a full season, but in the in the in short term, uh, since the coaching change, I think Cam Talbot has, has clearly been the better goalie, and, and he would be my choice to be the goalie, certainly going into the playoffs. Um, obviously, head coach Jim Hiller will have that decision to make, and he he has announced, by the way, that, again, Talbot's going tonight and Riddish is going tomorrow against Minnesota. Um, and I do expect to see Talbot in net Saturday against a very good Tampa Bay team. Now, you might say, why not start Talbot against Minnesota and Riddich against Chicago? Use your number two guy against the lesser of the two opponents. And I actually don't disagree with that because if you use Talbot against Minnesota, he still has two days off before he faces Tampa Bay. So I'm not really sure about that decision. Uh, Talbot, as far as the numbers head-to-head against Minnesota, Talbot has um, one start against Minnesota. He allowed three goals on 32 shots, got the win. And Riddich has yet to face Minnesota this season. So um, don't know why the decision was made. I'm sure there was a reason for it. I don't know what it is. Um, I would have gone with Riddich tonight, Talbot tomorrow, and then Talbot against Tampa Bay, but Talbot's going tonight, Riddich tomorrow, and then we'll see against Tampa Bay again. I think it's going to be Talbot. Anyway, there's no doubt in my mind that Cam Talbot will be the number one goalie for the Kings going into the playoffs, barring something completely unforeseen. Um, I, now that said, I don't think Jim Hiller would hesitate to use David Riddich if he felt he needed to change things up in a playoff series. Uh, Talbot to me though, is the goalie that can make that key save at the key time. We saw, I keep going back to that Ottawa game where he was excellent. Now, maybe it was just that one game, but I haven't seen that game from David Riddich this season. So if the Kings are going to have any playoff success, you know, I think it's I think it's going to have to be Cam Talbot. But like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if David Riddick got in net as well, if necessary. He is a capable backup. But the bottom line is, regardless of who starts, it's more about the Kings playing in front of these guys. If the Kings play solid defense, if they take advantage of scoring chances, I think they can win regardless of who's in net. I do think Talbot gives them the better chance of advancing uh, because of his spectacular save capabilities, but in the end, it will be about the the players in front of them. I think the Kings can win a playoff series if they play the right way with either of these two guys in net. It won't be because of them likely. Um, If they could make a key save at a key moment, erase a mistake here or there, that would be great. But again, it's it's really about the team in front of them. I think it's Cam Talbot, um, but we'll see going forward. I wouldn't though, be surprised again to see maybe both of them actually see action in the postseason, but we shall see. Um, all the teams the Kings are competing against for playoff positioning are in action tonight. We'll talk about that next year on Lockdown LA Kings, your team every day. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April the 30th, Robinhood is even 
boosting every single dollar you transfer from another retirement account with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on a 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with the 3% match. The offer is good through April the 30th. So get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Marketing Research. Investment involves risk including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. Must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% match on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker dealer. The L.A. Kings face the Chicago Blackhawks 7 p.m. Pacific time tonight. Catch every moment of the hometown broadcast to your L.A. Kings with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Just search L.A. Kings. Well, checking the Pacific Division standings and the Western Conference playoff picture, uh, there were only two games in the NHL last night, and none of them really involved any of the teams the Kings are battling with for playoff positions. But that is not the case tonight. 13 games on the schedule, and all the teams the Kings are battling with, jockeying for position, that kind of thing, are going to be in action. And they would include the Edmonton Oilers, who check in in second place in the Pacific, 84 points. They are five points in front of the LA Kings, and the Oilers are hosting a pretty bad Montreal Canadiens team tonight. Talked about the Kings uh, trying to catch Edmonton, trying to get home ice advantage, a potential first-round matchup. They're obviously taking on a very bad Blackhawks team. Nashville has 82 points. They're the number one wildcard team in the West right now. They are hosting a bad Sharks team tonight. Vegas is tied with LA with 79 points. The Kings, though, one more regulation win, giving them the tiebreaker. Uh, Vegas actually has the toughest test of any of these teams tonight. They are hosting the Tampa Bay Lightning. So a very good opportunity for the Kings to uh, extend that lead to get a two-point advantage on Vegas tonight if the Lightning can beat the Golden Knights in Vegas and L.A. can take care of business against Chicago. St. Louis is the first team on the outside looking in at a wild card spot. They've got 75 points, trying to make a late push. They've won four in a row, but that will be tested tonight as they are hosting a very good Colorado Avalanche team that is looking to win the Central Division. So Vegas and St. Louis have tough opponents tonight. Uh, Minnesota's hanging around 74 points. They are at the Ducks tonight so that's certainly winnable so Edmonton LA Nashville Minnesota all with pretty winnable games uh, Vegas and St. Louis with a couple of tough tests tonight so those are the games we'll be keeping track of and updating you on tomorrow now if the playoffs started today the Kings would still be facing the Edmonton Oilers in the first round other than the Blues hosting Colorado and you know uh, like I said uh, also Vegas taking out Tampa Bay a lot of winnable games for some of the other teams, though. So hopefully we'll do uh, the Kings will do what they're supposed to do tonight. If they can, good chance at uh, getting a little bit of a uh, more solid hold on that playoff position. Uh, the Kings will be taking on Chicago tonight. Will Victor Arvidsson be playing or not? That obviously will be the big question. Looking forward to answering that question coming up on tomorrow's show. If Arvidsson does, in fact, play, of course, we'll have a deep dive on how he looked what the numbers were, minutes played, who he played with, all that kind of stuff, and how it affected the lineup, uh, hopefully positively as well. So all that coming up on tomorrow's show. For you everydayers, those of you that listen watch Locked on LA Kings every day, uh, obviously we're going to recap that Kings-Blackhawks game tomorrow. Also preview the Kings-Wild game as LA playing the final of back-to-back -back games this season. Uh, on Thursday, we will recap the Kings-Wild game, and then on Friday, have another Kings fan feedback show. If you want to get in on that, the email address is the best way to get a hold of me. Uh, locked on Eddie at gmail.com. E D D I E is that email address. You're always welcome to leave your comments on the YouTube uh, channels as well. Uh, I do try and check social media. If there are any questions submitted that way. Um, I know there was one on Twitter that kind of fell through the cracks that I need to make sure I get to this week. But if you want to try and uh, send a message, uh, stay connected with the show 24 seven, Follow us on social media, X, Twitter, Instagram. We are at Locked On LA Kings. I'm Eddie Garcia. Thank you, as always, for listening and watching this episode of Locked On LA Kings, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you tomorrow. And as always, go Kings, go.